Okay, so with the clutch off on the other side, I can now turn my attention to removing the rotor and also the starter clutch which sits behind it. We can remove the starter clutch driven gear and I can remove these intermediate gears that connect the starter clutch driven gear basically to the starter motor which I removed earlier in the series. So the rotor is held on with one big large bolt which is on the end of the crankshaft is this bolt here so I've used the breaker bar already to uh, loosen this so it's torqued on really tight so I can now just remove it the rest of the way so I think it's just an M10 bolt securing that that this bolt has some um, tread lock or it had some tread lock on it to hold it on really securely because you don't want your rotor coming off while your engine is running so with that off um, I can then remove the three small bolts that are securing the rotor to the starter clutch so essentially the rotor turns on the end of the crankshaft with the engine when the engine is running and it brings the starter clutch which is sitting behind it I'll just turn it around just show you a little bit clearer the starter clutch is just this little unit that sits behind the rotor so there's our starter clutch And the starter clutch sits on this essentially this driven gear which is also uh, secured onto the uh, crankshaft so let's just go ahead and remove these three bolts just the first one Second bolt, I just use a little Allen key head to remove these. So, just before I remove the last one, um, let's just talk about how the starter clutch works. So, when you want to start your motorcycle, you press the starter button. With, which is usually at the right hand handlebar of the motorcycle and the starter motor essentially turns makes the intermediate gears turn and they act on this um, starter clutch driven gear so essentially I can just demonstrate that so when the starter motor is running it's going to turn these intermediate gears which act on the starter clutch driven gear which you can see moving behind and that starter clutch driven gear has the starter clutch sitting on it now I'll show you in a second but essentially the starter clutch has three rollers and when the starter clutch driven gear is rotating anti-clockwise the rollers cause friction between the starter clutch and the driven gear and as a result the starter clutch rotates with the driven gear and the starter clutch is connected to the rotor and the rotor is connected to the crankshaft and the crankshaft is connected to the piston through the connecting rod and essentially it causes the rotor, the crankshaft, and the piston to start. If you keep an eye on the piston while I turn this, sorry, take it this way, you will see that the piston is moving up and down <coughs> in the cylinder of the engine, which I've obviously removed earlier. So that's how the starter motor gets the engine running. Now, once the engine begins running, We no longer supply power to the starter motor. The starter motor turns off and the engine should be running on its own, on basically its own steam. So basically the 
the burn going on in the cylinder is driving the piston up and down in the cylinder of the engine and it in turn is causing the crankshaft to rotate along with it the rotor <clears throat> and as you can see here the rotor along with the starter clutch are rotating on the end of the crankshaft but you'll see here that the driven gear is no longer rotating and that's how a starter clutch essentially works the rollers create friction when the driven gear is rotating but when the driven gear stops the starter clutch is able to rotate independently of the driven gear so we can go ahead and remove the rotor just remove that last bolt now to remove the rotor on most motorcycles you will need a specialist tool which is called a rotor puller doing it the wrong way that's why so clockwise so the rotor puller again this will be torqued on really tightly so I have to use a breaker bar on the end of this rotor to essentially break that seal or the tight seal between the rotor but essentially this rotor puller pushes on the end of the crankshaft and it basically as you screw it, it this into the rotor it basically pulls the rotor off the end of the crankshaft so that's our rotor off I can just remove that quite quickly as you can see in this rotor puller there's a number of different different types of rotor pullers they're all for different rotors from that suit different engines so that's a universal rotor puller so it should do most motorcycles but that's my rotor off it's basically like a an old ashtray essentially smokers used to use so it's quite a just a big lump of metal with a magnet in the center so set that aside set my three bolts aside and now I can see my starter clutch so here are the three rotors that catch so this driven gear is driven by the starter motor and this this section here you see in the middle between the rotor and the starter clutch it's actually part of the um, driven gear and this starter clutch as you can see it can rotate independent of the driven gear and that's because the rollers move to the right hand side so they don't grip the intermediate or the driven gear now if I rotate the driven gear all of a sudden the little rollers move slightly as you can see here this one has moved to the left hand side and it grips the driven gear and it basically that friction between the roller the driven gear and the starter clutch causes the starter clutch to rotate with the driven gear okay so it's rotating with the driven gear and it brings turns the crankshaft starts the engine and once the engine is running there you can see the starter clutch moves independent of the driven gear again so I can remove the starter clutch okay I've done a separate video explaining this in a lot more detail <clears throat> so you can take a look at that if you want to understand how the starter clutch works I didn't really explain it fully there that's just a brief explanation behind each of the rollers is actually a little spring and that's to try and keep the rollers moving towards the end where the friction is okay so these little rollers over time on all as a motorcycle gets old these rollers can wear obviously because they work off friction they they're just little metal cylinders that's all they are so we'll set that to the side that's our starter clutch we can take off our intermediate gear that connects the driven gear to the, the intermediate sorry the, the driven gear to the starter motor so that's just that it just comes off nice and simply and then we can also remove 
This is the driven gear, the starter clutch driven gear. So this is sits on the end of the crankshaft. So it just rotates. There's no friction here. It doesn't grab onto the end of the crankshaft or anything like that. But that's the um, driven gear removed. And there we have uh, essentially a bare crankshaft. Now also on the end of the crankshaft, we can just point out there is a little key here. And that little key slots into the little groove which is in the rotor. And when the rotor is sitting on the end of the crankshaft, that little key is what the rotor grips onto. So that when the rotor turns, it brings the crankshaft with it. So next up, I want to remove the front sprocket from the output shaft. So it's just held on with two bolts and a little metal spacer. So I'll just go ahead now and uh, I've loosened the bolts already. They will be torqued tight. Obviously they will be on the outside in the elements so they may be rusty, slightly rusty or corroded. Now I can just take off this little spacer. It's a little bit like a trust washer. And then off comes the front sprocket. So there's our front sprocket off. So before I remove the, the little bolts that secure the crankcase halves together, I'm just going to remove this little oil strainer here. So I've already loosened it slightly. It's an oil filter oil strainer. It's on a little, it's actually mounted on a little spring. This is just a little rubber cap or plastic cap. So there's the cap. There's the spring. And here we have our little strainer which I can get out with a screwdriver. So here's the little strainer. Okay, so that sits in here like that. So it's on a little spring essentially, um, it's a pressure release valve I suppose. So essentially the oil will go through here and it will be strain out any little bits of metal or dirt. Now obviously you should be taking this out and cleaning it at a recommended service interval. But if somebody doesn't, somebody forgets to take this out and clean it, the dirt can build up, the residue can build up, it can get blocked, and then the oil can't go through the little strainer anymore, little mesh, it's just a little wire mesh strainer. So the oil pressure will build up because the oil pump is pumping the oil around the engine, and essentially as the pressure builds up because the filter is full or the strainer is full, it basically will push down on the spring like that and essentially it pushes the strainer out of the way and it allows the oil to circulate around the engine. So basically the oil is circulating around the engine and it's no longer being filtered or being strained which is not ideal but that is a preferable situation to the oil not circulating around the engine at all. Okay, so now we can go ahead and remove the bolts that are securing the crankcase halves. I have my little template here, cardboard template, with a hole pierced for each bolt that I see around the edge of the crankcase and I can just go ahead and remove them all, stick them into the relevant place because they're all going to be different lengths and then they won't get lost. So let's just go ahead and remove them. 
then just lastly I've turned the engine around on the other side because there is actually one bolt on this side which I think is actually securing the crankcase. As far as I'm aware this is the only bolt so size 10 so I'll just go ahead and remove that. Again it's not torqued on very tightly. This is securing on a little metal bracket as well so it has two rows. Okay, so there we go. As you can see, it's quite a long bolt. So, as I suspected, that was actually securing on the crankcase. But essentially, I'm just going to just start tapping it with a little rubber mallet. Very light tapping because this is a aluminium casing, and it will crack or chip if you hit it with something too hard, and if you use too much force. So here we can see, this is the break, the slight break that I was looking for. So I've been slowly banging my hammer around the edge of the casings and it's slowly coming apart. So this is what you're looking for. You just want to take it nice and slowly and make sure that the casings are coming apart evenly. Okay, so here we have the two parts of the crankcase separated now. Oh. So on one side we essentially we have this half which is essentially empty. So most of the shafts came out. This is the essentially this is the the left hand side of the engine or the out this is the left hand side outside of it and this is it on the inside. So as you can see, the gasket has been damaged, but that can't be avoided. It just sticks to one half, some of the areas when it's been separated, and then sticks to the other half, the other crankcase half on the other side for some parts as well. So there we have, but that side is just empty. And then this side we have our crankshaft, a piston, and here we have, we were able to see inside our gearbox. So this is the transmission, and this is the rear of the engine, and this is the front of the engine. So all these components stay with this side, and I'll go through it in more detail in a separate video. I'll do a video on the gearbox transmission, how that works. And on the crankshaft as well. So that's it for the moment. Hope you enjoyed this video guys. Until the next one, see you later.